In life, we all encounter obstacles, and those obstacles come in all different shapes, sizes, and forms. The question is, how do we handle those obstacles? Do we attack them head on, or do we allow them to make us quit? Welcome to the No Quit Living Podcast, where we aim to motivate and inspire listeners to never give up on themselves, their dreams, or their goals. We will interview successful people from all walks of life as they share their no quit stories when they had the choice to give up or give in, but they didn't. We thank you for listening, and we hope to be that jolt of positivity as you go for your greatness. Welcome to episode number 143 of the No Quit Living Podcast. I'm your host, Christopher J. Worth, and today's theme of the day is gratitude. Our quote of the day comes to us from Deepak Chopra. Gratitude opens the door to the power, the wisdom, the creativity of the universe. You open the door through gratitude. Today's episode is sponsored by the good people over at West Fair Communications, who publish the Westchester County Business Journal and the Fairfield County Business Journal. These newspapers do a wonderful job in covering all aspects of the business world within two of the most influential markets in the New York metropolitan area. You can also take advantage of their daily news feeds, which keep track on the companies and thought leaders in these important regions. For more information, take a look at www.westfaironline.com. Trust me, once you start reading, you won't quit. I'm very excited to bring you today's episode. I met our guest through Michael Alden, who was a past guest on our show. After just celebrating his first year of sobriety and also releasing his first book, I'm honored to introduce you to Jason Highland. Today, Jason shares his story very open and honest with us, and I hope you enjoy today's episode. Jason, I'd like to welcome you to the No Quit Living podcast. Thank you very much, Chris. It's an honor and pleasure to be on. I appreciate it. So the first question I ask everybody is, are you ready to bring it today? Absolutely. I knew you'd say that. So the (laughs) the number one objective of our show is to both motivate and inspire listeners to never give up. I was curious if you had either a no quit story yourself or a challenging time in your life that really tested you, but you kept on going and didn't quit. Yeah, really to bring it to the forefront as to how yourself and I got in touch is because of my past with uh, drugs and alcohol, uh, as an as an addict and an alcoholic, I had no choice but either to quit in regards to trying to get help and just you know give in and give up, or actually do whatever it took to you know to win the battle per se. And it's something I I am striving to do on a daily basis, getting better and healthier on a daily basis. And you know it was very close to where my life was lost because of that, and I had those two choices either to to give up. Or you know to to get going. You know, I I think that's it's very impressive that you've you've done and you made the decision, and it, that is how we connect. We connected actually via a former guest of mine, uh, Michael Alden, who is a good buddy of mine, and I know obviously a good buddy of yours. But I have a very I guess candid question for you, and I know in our country that there's a big issue with drugs and alcohol, and it gets to the point for a lot of people where they have that choice and there's the dead end road where you can go left or right and one side is giving up um, and the other one is you know getting after it what what was it during that time where you were able to did you have somebody in your corner or the many people but what got you to the point where you are today because I think it's remarkable what you're doing you know that's the million dollar question because it is really hard to describe the events that unfolded on July 23rd, 2017, and then the 24th, which is my actual sobriety date when I walked into detox. And really, all I can say is something happened that was bigger than me that took over and said, this is going to be it. I knew wholeheartedly that at the 23rd, I would have my last drink, I would take my last drug, and that would be it. From that point on, it was a mission that I've been on to do whatever it takes to assure that I never went back to the life that I was living. I could never go back there. So I walked into that detox and then into the rehab thereafter with the attitude of tell me what to do to assure that I never do go back. I will do whatever you tell me to do. I will shed as many tears as possible because I know no pain that I will ever go through again will be worse than where I was. So I was willing to do literally whatever it takes. And when I got into a six month rehab after a month in detox, they interview you because it's a, it's a, there's a long waiting line to get into this place in Newburyport uh, called the link house. And 
the main question that they always end with is, are you willing to do whatever it takes to stay clean and sober one day at a time? And I was, there was just no matter what I had to do, I was willing to do it. And I still am to this day. And that, you know, that's what really has bringing me uh, to, to podcasts like this and bringing me be able to share my journey and my story and my truth, because I don't want to ever go back there, obviously, but I don't, more importantly, I don't want anyone else to have to be in the shoes that I was wearing last year at this point. You know, I think that's I think it's incredible, and and you deserve, as I said before, a, a huge amount of credit. This past December, um, we uh, buried a kid that I coached. I uh, was very close with his brother and his family, and he was actually on my brother's uh, team and also went to college with my brother. So it was a really really tough time with with a drug overdose. So I definitely know. And it hit home in many ways, and I'm sure many of our listeners do. So I want to change change lanes here for a minute, and I wanted to ask you if you could just tell our listeners a little bit about who you are and what you do. Yes, sure. And first off, I'm sorry to hear about that. It's an all too familiar story, unfortunately. But again, that's why I'm here and doing what I do. And what I do is really trying to give back as much as possible. And how do I do that? Some something inside of me told me to start writing when I was on the. The, my journey at the beginning in rehab and that writing led to a book stop thinking like that which led to you know this outpouring of people from my past from as far back as little league to complete strangers from all over the country and they were reaching out to me privately saying some were saying thank you and they were thankful that they realized they're not alone that other people have gone through what they have and are doing well and succeeding, giving them the hope and inspiration that they need. I'd have parents reaching out to me, thanking me because they had a glimpse into how their son or daughter was thinking, what was going through their mind. Because I've been very candid, real, real open and raw, because I, I don't know what how else to be. This is all brand new to me. And I'm putting it out there and I'm seeing this you know, response from people all over. And I'm like, okay, I can't stop doing that. I have to continue putting out as much as I can because if I can change one person, make a difference in one person's life, that's saving one, per one person's family. You know, that's keeping a family intact. And, and that could be, you know, someone's father, someone's daughter, someone's son, and so forth. And that's how I look at it. You know, so I just try to reach out to uh, and help anyone that I can that reaches out to me, as well as just keep continue to putting out uh, my story and my truth on uh, you know, platforms such as this. Because, again... I don't want ever want anyone to have to go through what I went through. I personally, obviously, never, ever, I'm not willing to go back to that. There's just no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So I'll do whatever it takes for myself and to help others. You know, just, just listening to you speak just reminds me of a, a former guest of ours, a gentleman by the name of Bill Mitchell, who's a very good friend of my father's. He's like a second father to me. He was on our show, wow, this is back in July of 2017, and I believe he just passed his 28th year of sobriety, he had a major issue with drinking, and one of the things he does, and I have met so many of the people that he does, is he doesn't ask somebody that he's helped to financially pay him back or to make a donation or to do something. What he asks is that they pay it forward for somebody else, and I think it's amazing. So I'm actually, on a side note, going to connect you with uh, with Bill because I think the two of you have a uh, have a lot in common. So with That'd be uh, amazing, yeah, no, you guys are uh, really good people. So. The thing that we ask all the time is, how do you define success? So knowing that you've had these these different challenges and what you're doing now, has your definition of success maybe changed or is it has it always been the same? It's definitely changed in the last year or so because um, one simple thing, and that's gratitude. You know, before I got help and, and even bef when I was stuck in addiction before that, it was I'm not gonna lie. It was a lot of the materialistic things. How much? How much can you? Money can you make? What? What goodies can you have? You know, to make you look like you're doing well. And you know, financially speaking, it, it is good to have money, obviously, and, be, and not have the worries. You know, financial worries. I get that 100. percent But what I realized is, I ne ne today now I don't have nearly as much as I ever have in in regards to material stuff or or financial success, so to speak. And I've never been happier. And so success to me now is just being able to wake up with a smile. Be, this something It's very simple. Being able to wake up and knowing that I can make a difference in someone else's life, be, even if it's a very small part. So 
even though I'm nowhere near where, you know, I thought I would be when I was graduating college, you know, by the time where I'm now 35, you know, I know that it's still just, just begun for me. I'm, this is just the tip of the iceberg in regards to where my life is going and how successful I can be. So to really bring it all together, success is, has nothing to do with how much money's in your bank account, how many cars are in your driveway. Success to me is, is, is are you happy in life? Are you a happy individual no matter what surrounds you? Do you wake up happy and you know, willing to inspire others? No, I think that's a, that's a great definition. And that question to me is always so, so interesting because it's open-ended. It's not a yes or no question. It's getting mm. into that person. So I really appreciate you, you opening up on that. I think I might know the answer, but if you had to define yourself and you can only do it in one word, what would that word be? <laughs> I'm curious to know what your answer was first. <laughs> I was going to say gratitude. Yeah, grateful. Absolutely. You, you hit it right on the head. Uh, grateful is everything to me, as, as I mentioned um, upon the first thing of thinking about success. I'm so grateful just to be able to to, to breathe today because it, it was I, I shouldn't be. I really shouldn't. After everything I put myself through and put my body through, let alone, you know, putting other individuals uh, safety in, in jeopardy. I'm grateful that I have today that I have this moment right now. You know, I didn't tell you, but I'm a, a mind reader, so I actually knew that you were going to say gratitude <laughs> or grateful. Fair enough. So one of the things we ask is, as we're always looking to improve different things for our listeners and give them different things to think about. So I was curious if you have either a morning or a daily ritual that you swear by. Yes, and I, I'm not going to lie, it's kind of got off track a little bit since um, I graduated from the rehab program February 23rd. And one thing that that program taught me is structure. And that is something that I seriously lacked the last couple of years of my life before I finally you know, got the help I needed. And that structure led me to do um, things that are, I never did before. You know, I, I would always try to emulate the people who I saw doing well when I was out in the community of Newburyport, where it's a big AA community and at the meetings, I would try to, you know, I would seek out the person who I could see they were, they had that success. Okay, they were happy, and I would want to you know, follow their path and hear what they were doing. And one of the big things was uh, writing a gratitude list. I learned of it early on in um, my recovery when I was still in the detox, and I just like it doesn't make any sense. You're going to wake up and write what you're grateful for, and all of a sudden you're going to have a good day. But once I started doing it things changed, really, really changed. And I would always be grateful for three specific things, uh, my parents, and my dogs, and another day. But then I started becoming, as I meant, grateful for brushing my teeth, something I absolutely rarely did, maybe once every few days, taking a shower, you know, just, just taking care of myself, taking my dogs for a walk, things like that. So writing that gratitude list so I started remembering those things and getting appreciative of the things that I want in my life, as, as little as in minute as they may be, that I want back in my life. So writing that gratitude list is something that every morning I would wake up and I'd first thing before I got out of bed, I'd write it. I do it still to this day, but it's not on a daily basis, which I need to, you know, I need to go back and, and remember where I came from and, and, you know, what got me to this point of being able to speak on uh, w with an individual like yourself. So that part of my routine is an absolute. And then at the end of the night, you know, my higher power, whom I, I choose to call God, I say, thank you for another day clean and sober. And I ask him to look over those that are still sick and suffering. Those two, those, the bookends of my day are an, an absolute must for me. You know, I love that. It reminds me of a, of a quote that uh, Melody Beattie said, and I think I might have shared it on some of the uh, episodes earlier, but it's gratitude. Gratitude turns what we have into enough. And I think it's just a amazing thing. And, and like you said, the first time I heard the concept of being grateful in the morning or at night, I felt the same thing. It's kind of like, well, what's, you know, what's it really going to do? But it, it just almost magically changes uh, okay day into a better day or a really bad day into a, you know, a, a less of a painful day. And it turns those really good days a lot of times into great days. And I think it's just something that we all can do. And, you know, it doesn't cost anything. And that's the best part is literally it could take a minute or it could take five or 10 minutes, but we all can do it. And I think if you back, back in and front load your days on a positive way and turning on the gratitude attitude, I think it just has so much application in so many different ways. 
Yes, I agree. And you just you just reminded me of something that very important. For my mornings, I make my day. I make my day. I make my bed every morning, no matter what. And in something again, I was taught that was we were forced to do at the house I stayed at. But then I started, uh, you know, I, I brainwashed myself with YouTube, motivational YouTubes, and there were so many of these very successful people. And again, not the, the riches they were they were rich in in, in life, and they were doing that, you know, making their bed. And the best explanation I feel that I, that I got from it is no matter how bad your day may have been, when you go to bed at night, at least you're getting into a freshly made bed. And that, that's, that was, that was it for me right there. I was like, that, that makes total sense. You know, I'm going to bed again. I'm going to bed grateful that I'm getting into a freshly made bed, let alone a bed at that. Um, this, I was going to say the second thing, sorry, you just mentioned Melody Beattie and that's really, there's no coincidences I told you I was just at the library, you know, before we got on here, I was at the library and I was talking uh, about Melody Beattie because one of her books popped up on a site my girlfriend and I were looking at and I'm in her room and she has a book, Melody Beattie, that I'm looking at right now. So there's no coincidences like that. <laughs> well, maybe I am a mind reader and I didn't know it. <laughs> you just might be have something there. <laughs> so, so you mentioned making your bed and, and I'm sure you've heard or read the book by Admiral uh, McRaven, Make Your Bed. It's an unbelievable book. For our listeners out there, if you have not heard of the book um, and you're interested, I would definitely recommend just, just go to YouTube and search Admiral McGrave, and, he's, and you'll pull up his, I believe it's University of Texas speech, I think he did at graduation in 2014 or 15. It's, I think, 17 minutes, but it's definitely worth uh, worth the 17 minutes. Very powerful. So speaking of books, I wanted to ask, have you read anything recently, or are you reading anything that you'd like to recommend to our listeners? I'm not reading as much as I did when I was first, you know, those first five months of recovery when I was away. I read 30, pl- 30 plus books all on personal development or success stories, people overcoming uh, great adversity. The book I I just finished, though, was um, from Dave Meltzer, who I would like to say he's a mentor to me. And I came across him from watching another podcast on YouTube that he did. And he's a very um, established humanitarian. And he co-founded S1 Sports Marketing with Warren Moon, Hall of Fame quarterback. And I really gravitated to what Dave does with his work not only just on the humanitarian side, but his story as well. And I reached out to him. This is the beauty of everything that I've gone through and really what writing a gratitude list in the morning starts showing me things fall into place for you. Reached out to him on Instagram, let him know a little bit about me and if I could share my book with him. And he said, no problem, I'll send you mine. I was, I was floored. Literally within three days, I got two of his books. And the one that I read right away was called Connected to Greatness. And Within the first chapter, there was three different quotes that aren't like famous quotes out there that he actually just wrote. And I wrote those same exact ones in my story. It was really eerie. And I had to let him know. And I took pictures of both. And it was just, it was really, it was like, wow, this is, this is one of those no coincident meant to be type moments. So Connected to Greatness was the last book I, I, I read cover to cover. And it was fantastic. And the second book that I, I try to read on a daily basis, and Mike Alden actually is the one who recommended it, is called Getting Things Done, just to really help me with my organizational skills and you know time management because I'm everything I'm doing in the past year or so, in, in particular once the book came out and has been is, is new to me, and I needed to have some type of structure on how to handle all the different things that are coming at me, all positive things, which is the, the great part, but it is a little bit overwhelming. So I needed to you know, take a step back and figure out how to, how to handle this and, and prepare for every day going forward because I can get lost and, and, and doing one thing and then to the next. So that book, Getting Things Done, has been, has been instrumental in, in, in helping that. No, it's interesting what people can get from from books, and you and I might read the same thing. And the reason I use the word interesting is because we might read the exact same book and we might take things differently. But I always tell people, and the reason I love that question is I actually got that question from a personal mentor of mine, John C. Maxwell, and that's something that he asks everybody that he meets with. He asks them if they're reading anything that they'd like to share, and I've just been introduced to a lot of really good books. Yeah, I actually uh, quoted Maxwell twice in, in my book. I knew that too because, again, <laughs> I, read, I read minds. 
Exactly. <laughs> so, so assuming the 20 year old version of yourself would have listened, what would be the one piece of advice you would go back and give to the 20 year old Jason? That there's always more to be learned. There's always more to be taught that you're, you don't have all the answers and it's okay to be vulnerable. And by vulnerable, vulnerable has been a very key cog in my, my recovery. Once I allowed myself to be vulnerable, it really opened up so much more to me because it was me telling myself, it's okay that you don't know. It's okay that you don't know how. It's okay that you don't have the answers. That it's, that's okay because no one has all the answers. And becoming vulnerable has really has been instrumental in, in, in my recovery for, for that reason. That it, It's just like asking for help as an addict. It, one of the scariest, the, the hardest thing to do is just that initial asking for help because you know you're going to show vulnerability, which to so many people means you're showing weakness. And to me, I could think it's the absolute antithesis of that. It's showing you're powerful because you're owning up to who you are. You're owning up to your faults, your flaws, and you're owning up to that you're willing to listen, to learn, to take suggestions. I, I love the word vulnerable. And I think a lot of my listeners and a lot of people in my, in my circle know that I've been going through some stuff in the past probably seven or eight months in my in my personal life. And I've been vulnerable with a lot of people that have come into my life and I've created and built some amazing relationships. And it's just, it's a really powerful word because I think most people look at being vulnerable as they're going to be taken advantage of. And it's actually completely the opposite is when you're more vulnerable with people, with a job, with a goal and objective is you really get into it. And some of the best relationships and some of the best things that happen to people is when they really get vulnerable and open up to, to others. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. It is, like I said, it's been instrumental and a key part of my recovery. So if you could have dinner with anybody dead or alive, who would it be and why? Oh man, that's really putting me on the spot. Huh. You know, it, it could be easy to say any of the individuals that I've read and learned of in the past year or so, but you know, baseball is what I'm known by and, and always been known by. And it's, it's my true love in life. And you know, I have to tell my my girlfriend or anyone that gets close to me, listen, baseball's number one. You're, you'll be second, but baseball, the Red Sox are always number number one in my life. So with that being said, I, it would have to be Ted Williams would probably be because not only obviously he's just absolutely the greatest hitter of all time, one of the you know an amazing athlete, but what he went through during his lifetime, you know, to to stop playing for years and come back and still be better because he went to the war, you know, just the different things that he probably has seen and went through and, and you know, experienced. And then just talk and shop with him when it comes to the, to hitting, I could probably, I could, I could just sit there and be, you know, be a, uh, a, a listener, an active listener <laughs> at that. And, um, so T Ted Williams, I would say would be probably my choice. The last person to hit 400, right? Yep. 406. 406. A buddy of mine actually started a company up in Boston. It's called 406 Ventures. So he had, oh, that's uh, awesome. and I asked him specifically and he said, yep. He said, I grew up near the Boston area and uh, that's exactly where it came from. Can I say who, uh, who would be the living? It would, it, I would stick with sports. It'd be Tom Brady. Cause you know, having to know what he has to deal with on a daily basis in, in this, you know, a totally different era of the social media, all the publicity, everything that has to go around it. I can just imagine what it's like to be a day in his life. Just that would be nice to be in. I'm not going to tell you who I'm a fan of because I don't think it'll it'll help. Uh, I can I can just imagine, but go ahead. You, know what? you, you made Tom me... Coughlin. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I respect him, and he he's he's unbelievable at what he does. There's no doubt about it. I I don't, you know, there are teams obviously I don't like, and. and I don't disrespect those teams, like in particular the Yankees and the Yankees fans. I lived in Tampa for a while, and the Tampa Devil Rays then turned Rays were the, most, the warm weather fans of all time. They were all Red Sox and Yankees fans. They started doing good. They all transferred over to the Devil Rays side. And majority of them, though, had no clue about the game. At least when you're talking with a Yankees fan, they know every little fine detail about it, and I respect that. If you know what you're talking about, then you can be a fan of anyone. I respect it. I'm a, I'm a Mets fan, so we, we won't go there. <laughs>
Lip sealed. There we go. All right, we're going to switch over to what we call our hot seat questions. We're very simple. The only thing we ask is if you just spit out the first thing that comes to mind. All righty. All right. What would you choose if you could have absolutely anything for your last meal? It would be a large cheese pizza from a place here in Beverly. <laughs> Favorite sport? I think I know that one. Baseball, obviously, it's my passion, it's my love. But football, I, I played and, and I was going to play in college. I that one day of game day in football is is indescribable. But baseball is my true love, like I just mentioned. Favorite team? Boston Red Sox, die hard. All time favorite movie? I'm really gonna sound like a homer now. <laughs> um, uh, Home Alone was like my go-to <laughs> as a kid. Yeah. I love, absolutely loved Home Alone, and I loved even to this day. You know, on Thanksgiving Eve or Thanksgiving night, you know it's gonna be on, which is great, and I'll watch it every single time. <laughs> but I, I like Goodwill Hunting. I like uh. The Departed. I like Town. I, I'm and I'm a homer. The one I don't like though that was actually filmed on my street is Manchester by the Sea. I, I did not like, I did not care for it. And, you know, that's, it's funny because that's the one that won all the awards. All right. I'm a, I'm a huge movie guy, so I got to go with it. You like apples? I got a number. <laughs> How you like them apples? <laughs> exactly. That's, that's, that's all you need. Everyone knows that line. <laughs> Your favorite book? Stop Thinking Like That, No Matter What by Jason Highland. Is, it, is that a good book? <laughs> I've heard it's. I've heard it's doing quite well, and you know, it was instrumental. That's like the key <laughs> word of the day. It was very uh, crucial in my recovery. Needless to say. All right, I got. But, I got it. I got to ask if 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 that book didn't exist, what would your be your second favorite book? Right. <laughs> the the book that really got it all going for me in regards to uh, the positive mindset and being able to conceive, believe, achieve, which would be think and grow rich. One of the all time best. Yes, that, that that's the first book I was introduced to, and uh, after college, that got me into that you know the personal development field. Now it did take me some ten years later to really put it all to use, but hey, better late than never. No, definitely better late than never. All right, favorite singer or band? No, I'm. Um, I can tell you my favorite song is "Sweet Home Alabama" by Leonard Skinner, and. I don't have any like favorite go to though. Anything that's gonna get my feet moving, really. I, but I music, um, it, it could be anything. So I never really had any uh, a go to. But Sweet Home Alabama and random total opposite end of the spectrum is Mo Money Mo Problems by by Biggie. For some reason that's always been those two. Those are my two. They're two opposite type songs, but those are my two favorites of all time. Very similar songs too. <laughs> So, so one of the things we, we talk about very often on our show and with our company and, and in the different things we do in our programs is the word accountability. I wanted to ask you, what does accountability mean to you? It means everything. And I write about it often and I'm actually – and right now I'm in the process of putting together a workbook for people in early recovery as well as maintaining success um, and in recovery moving forward. And one of the key things that I uh, really, the, the seven pillars that I have of having success in recovery and two are acceptance and accountability and accountability. It's so, it's so vital because it, it goes back to that vulnerability. When you're accountable, you're taking, you know, when you're vulnerable, you're saying, okay, I'm accountable for my actions, which means you're not pointing fingers at anyone else. You're not, you know, shoving the blame off to someone else. You're not blaming your circumstances on anyone but yourself. And what that does is that allows you to be uncomfortable. Um, to me, being uncomfortable is where you achieve maximum growth. So if, when you're accountable, you can't point any fingers at anywhere or anyone else. That's why um, I always like to be in charge or my own boss because then I can't blame anyone if something doesn't go right. You know, it's, 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 you know, that responsibility factor, but accountability, it's, it's a whole nother level. And it's so important in particular in recovery, because you're never going to get through to becoming the person you want to be, or really having any type of uh, success or finding happiness in, uh, you know, while clean and sober, if you're not taken accountable, because then you're still going to always have those, those vendettas and resentments against people because you're blaming them for anything that may have happened to you. You know, it's, uh, I think it's Tony Robbins who said 
if you're going to blame everyone for all the bad that's happened in your life, you better be blaming them for all the good that has happened too. Yeah, no, I, th- I think that's uh, such a great and a, such a powerful word. So you briefly spoke about your book. So I'd like you just maybe give uh, another little plug for your book, but also you shared some exciting uh, news about, I believe, an event o- August 31st that's coming up. Yeah, so because of the the book, Stop Thinking Like That, it's gained notoriety, again, because it's just I put some serious – I put everything out there on, on, a, on a platter and just said, this is me. This is what I've done. Like it or love it. And I feel like I'm gonna, I'll am gonna. i take all the stigmas. I'll take all the criticism. That's okay. I'll wear it because I know it's making a difference. And it's early on when people started reaching out to me when I was you know putting some of my work out there before it was published – is when I realized this is so much bigger than me. It's much bigger than my me, my journey, my personal recovery. It's much bigger than a book. It's it's about this epidemic that the country as a whole is facing. And then let's be serious. It's the most serious. It's the most serious epidemic right now that there is. And from these strangers reaching out to me and these opportunities that kept falling into my lap, it's like there's something so much bigger working through me. To, to put my word out there to help others. And from that, I I would say this is probably the biggest opportunity and platform outside of this pl- uh, podcast right now is on August 31st, it's International Overdose Awareness Day. And it's a day that's celebrated since 2001, celebrated for, for lack of a better term, I guess you could say. And it's in <clears throat> over 19 countries, 500 cities, that have an event put on the cities, all the major cities, the light the sky up purple and silver. And if, if you're in Boston, I, I'm very familiar with seeing that the, the Zaycom Bridge goes purple. And this year, the, the event's always, and the Boston event is always at Boston Common, which is you know basically the backyard or the front yard to the state house. And I randomly, I got <clears throat> sent a message on Facebook asking if I'd like to speak. And this is that no coincidences thing. The message was sent on a Tuesday. I was away up north in North Conway. I didn't get the message till like Wednesday morning. And I reached out and said, yes, I'd love to. And the lady who messaged me, she said, well, I'm glad you got back to me because I'm on the way to the hearing right now. There's a voting process. I just want to make sure that you'd be okay if we put your name in for the vote. And I was like, yes, anything, anything I need to do, just let me know. Because I, I told myself in something that was telling me, rather, that to, to not just keep writing, because there were so many naysayers, critics, doubters, people thinking I was just absolutely delusional, saying I was going to write a book when I was only a few months sober. But something was always also telling me to speak, speak, and speak some more. I hated public speaking before all this happened. Now I, I could go on forever. I, got, I, was, I would get told to shut up. I spoke too much when I was at up in Newburyport at the house because I just love to speak because it one, it's my therapy. It helps keep me sober. So I'll do, like I said, whatever it takes. And <clears throat> the event though, whatever she needed, I said, I would do however, even if it was just, you know, a brief introduction, I don't care. Put me on that stage, put me on that platform because I was told through something bigger that I'd write a book and that I'd be speaking at the state level. Well, this, and I might sound crazy right now, but I sent an email to my mother and to myself saying this was going to happen back in November. You know, here we are now. The, the book came out in March uh, on pre-order and became a, a bestseller within two weeks. So that was accomplished. That premonition was accomplished. And the other was that I was going to speak, like I said, at the state level. Well, this occurrence happened uh, in regards to the message. And she sent me in uh, a Facebook message probably two hours later saying, congratulations, Mr. Hyland, you've been unanimously voted your book has been very well received in the recovery uh, community, and we'd ha- be happy to have you speak. Just today, I found out there's only eight speakers at this event, and it's a three-hour event. And we were talking about being a homer. Mark Wahlberg spoke at this event last year. He was one of the speakers. The, the governor and the mayor both have, have taken part. And it's like, okay, there's something going on here. This is something so much bigger than myself. Now, um, I just hit a year sober last week, July 24th, and here I am now going to be on the biggest stage of the year because I need to put my truth out there. I need to put whatever is going to come through 
and, and, and reach out and get, get to, even if, again, if it's just one person, that one person can always make a difference. I've always had that mentality when I'm speaking. So to, to really summarize, that was a long way to get to, yes, August 31st at the Boston Common. It's a Friday night. I'll be spe- one of eight speakers at the International Overdose Awareness Day. I'm in the process right now of making shirts. I, I got a sponsor from um, a recovery center down in West Palm Beach. You know, things behind the scenes that you know people aren't, aren't seeing that I'm just trying to constantly, constantly, constantly network and reach out to people and, and groups and organizations to help build my, you know, my message and, and my vision. And that is to spread hope and inspiration from coast to coast, period. That's it. That is awesome. And congratulations on being a year sober. I know that's a, that's a big deal in, within the recovery stage. So I want to ask you, Thank you. a question before, uh, before we let you go. I wanted to ask you if you have any parting words you'd like to leave with our listeners. Well, first off, I can't believe it's already time to go. I could talk to you for, for a long time. Your questions <laughs> were great. And I'm not just saying that. You know, It's always good to be able to. I, I say this on, on Instagram, actually. When someone follows me, and it's someone within the recovery community, I'll just reach out and say, it's so great to be able to, to network with like-minded individuals because there's so much, there's so much hate, I guess, for lack of a better term, and shade being thrown on people, especially in the recovery community. And what I've noticed is that's, that's okay. I, like I said, I'll wear it. I'll wear it all knowing that I can make a difference in someone else's life. And really, it was a parting shot, I guess, and parting words would be, don't give up. There's n- never any hope lost, no matter what the situation. I shouldn't be here right now having this conversation. You know, if you read ab- into my story about where I was, be like, there's no way in hell this kid is where he is right now. But I didn't give up. I knew that there was a bigger plan for me. And once I started seeing other people who've done it too, because no matter how bad it may be for you, someone else has been there before. And they're doing well now. I always look at it that way. No matter how bad it is for you right now, someone's been there in your shoes and they've, they've made it. So why can't you? That's always the, the end words I'll have when I speak is, why can't you? you know, or who says you can't? You know, I could have gave in and listened to all, the, all the, the haters. Like I said, there was plenty of them. But that's, that's, they're not in charge of my, my destiny. I determine that. You determine that. Yours and so forth. So really, there's never, you're never alone if you're, if you're listening to this and you're you know, struggling right now with addiction. You're never alone. I promise you that. I'm here for you. You can reach out to me. But I'm sure there's plenty of other people you can. And two, don't ever give up hope. Don't ever give up hope because you can make a difference. That's the probably the biggest thing I've learned in the past year or so is one person can make a difference and I get to live that out on a daily basis and I am forever grateful for that. No, that's that's great parting advice. And I wanted to ask you, what's the best way for our listeners to follow you, connect with you, and also where can they get your book? Well, my book can be found on uh, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Books A Million. It's Stop Thinking Like That, subtitles no matter what. My website is jason Highland H-Y-L-A-N-D, Dot com and then all social media i'm jason r highland and as i mentioned if you need someone to talk to even it's just to let something out i'm i'm here for you it's completely anonymous i'm completely i'm here to help that's all i know that's my purpose i found my purpose on this journey and it, it's a beautiful thing and again i get to do that on a daily basis and so i'm forever grateful for that that's awesome well listen jason i truly appreciate it, it was not only a fun conversation but you shared some some really great stuff, and I think the one thing I'll say to our listeners is definitely connect with Jason, and I think the two words I would say for today were gratitude and also being vulnerable. So thank you for, for what you shared with us, and I look forward to hopefully talking with you soon. Absolutely, Chris. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you for listening to episode number 143. Jason Hyland was very candid about his prior life with drugs and alcohol, and how he finally made a decision that ultimately changed and possibly saved his life. When he spoke about a morning ritual, Jason spoke about how he wakes up each day and focuses on being grateful for who he is and what he has. Some form of gratefulness or gratitude has been a common theme and answer among our guests on their daily or morning rituals. Personally, it's something I try to do each morning and evening, and when I do, I know that I personally feel better about what I do have in my life. Jason's definition of success happens to be one of my favorite answers. He defines success as waking up each and every day with a smile on his face 
and trying to make a difference in someone else's life. Such a simple idea and something we all can and should probably ask ourselves. In his closing remarks, Jason shared the importance of not giving up and asking yourself, why can't you? Who says you can't? And remembering that everyone can make a difference. So my question to our no-quit tribe is just that. Whose life can you make a positive impact on today? Whose life can you have a positive difference in? Maybe it's a friend or a family member that you should cut some slack to. Perhaps it's just reaching out to a friend you haven't spoke to in quite some time. Or maybe even just smiling at a stranger or waiting to hold the door open for someone that's a few feet or a few seconds behind. Today I challenge each of you to do one thing to make a positive difference in someone else's life and do it for them, not you. Be genuine, be sincere, and do something for someone else as you go for your greatness. And lastly, to our listeners, thank you. We truly appreciate your time and we hope our episodes inspire you to keep on attacking life and never giving up. To quote Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, it's always too early to quit.